Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at how to insert data into our database, how to update data in our database, and how to delete data from our database. We have already taken a look at how to connect our app to an online server as well as localhost. I'll leave the link to those videos in the description. So in the previous videos, we use HTTP GET to make this connection. However, in this video, I'm going to use HTTP POST to insert, update, and delete the data. Okay, as you can see, this is from the previous tutorial. And then I've added this floating action button, which takes us to a new page. And then in this page, I have this heading, these two text fields with username and password, and then insert button, update button, and delete button. So let me walk you through what I've done here. So this is from our previous video. And I've put this floating action button here. And this floating action button, I have a child, which is this icon. And then when we press it, I want to navigate to this class, insert, update, delete. And I'm using Cupertino page route. And you can see how I've added hero tag to the floating action button. This hero tag is optional, but I think it's worth mentioning since most often people get a lot of problems with it. When you try to use one floating action button in the list view or several times in one single page, so each floating action button must have a unique hero tag. However, if it's just one in a page, you can leave it, but if there are two or more, you have to differentiate them. But you generally don't do it since most of it, you just add one floating action button. If you intend to add more than one, then you have to give each one a unique hero tag. Okay, so that was it by the way. And then I see you have my app bar, flutter connect to local host, and then what we did for the previous tutorial. This insert update delete method is this class, and then in this class I have a scaffold with an app bar. I also have two text fields, this one for the username input, and then this one for password. The text field takes a controller, then this controller is a text editing controller, and I have specified this app here. As you can see, this is a text editing controller. And then what I'm doing here, I'm just taking the text in this username control, and then putting it into this username email. So whatever you input in this text field will be put into this variable and then I get a text out of this and then assign it to this variable and I've done the same for the password. I've also provided this hint of username and password. Below them I have these three buttons, one for insert, one for update and one for delete. So without much ado, let's go into our workspace folder and create PHP files for this insert, update, and delete. Okay, so in here, I'm going to go into my www directory. Remember I said if you're on Excel, yours will be htdocs. Come into this folder. And these are the two files we had from the previous videos. I'm going to go ahead and create three other files. One for insert, one for update, and then the other for delete. Okay, so I'm going to open Notepad. And then I'm going to open and close PHP tags. I'm going to save this. And I'll save it here. And then save. So now you can see we have it here. I'm going to go ahead and create the other files. Okay, so now you can see I have this additional files. Delete, update, PHP files. So I'm going to go back into Visual Studio Code. As you can see my insert file, I have nothing here besides these tags. First of all, what we will do is to add our connection.php file. So I'm going to say require connection.php. And then what we're going to do, we're going to pick the data from this box and this box and then send them into our database. So I'm going to provide the data anytime the request is being made to the database. And to do that, I'm gonna create two variables, one for the username or user, the one for password. Username, dollar underscore, post, 
remember I said at the beginning of the tutorial that we're going to use HTTP post instead of HTTP get. And say uname. So we're going to provide this uname attribute when we're making our post in our Flutter app. I'm going to go ahead and create another variable. Fast WD. Okay, so mind you, we're going to provide this you name and then this pass in our Flutter app, but then we are assigning them to these variables so that we can use them here. So next, I'm going to click a variable to hold my insert query. So just like we did before, I'm going to call it query. Next thing should be equal to, I'm going to say into after this, we have to provide the name of our database table. In our case, this is our database and this is our table name. I'm going to put that here. And I'm also going to specify the columns I want to insert this into. I'm going to say heading. I want to insert into our headings column, then body. And then we we'll have to specify the values we want to insert. I'm going to say values. So our values are going to come from here. They're going to be strings. I'm going to say single quote, double quote, and then dot, dot. And then we'll put our variable in between these dots. So it is just to help put our variable here so that the variable name is not taken as a string instead. The first one is going to be for the heading, I'm going to make it the username. Then bring a comma. I'm going to copy the same thing. Then this time around, pass WD. Next, we're going to create our statement to prepare the query as we did earlier. I'm going to say connection. And then prepare. So what do we want to prepare? We want to prepare the query ST. Okay, and then now we are done with preparing the query. We want to execute it. I'm going to say statement execute. Okay, so this will execute our query. Then when we're done, I want to say echo JSON and code inserted data. Okay, so just a quick recap. We attach our collection.php file, and then here we declare these two variables to hold the input from our Flutter app. And then we made this insert statement to add to these columns and then these values, which are these variables, which we provide in our app when we are making the post request. We are preparing our query here, and then we are executing it here. After that, we are displaying this. Back to the end of that. So as you can see from the previous tutorial, we use HTTP get here. This HTTP get text URL and headers. I'm going to call a method. Insert method. It's going to be a sync. Then, as usual, I'm going to make a string, the URL that we're going to make the post request to. And remember, this URL we can get it from our database by coming to this test localhost. You can see we have our files here. I'm gonna go ahead and open this. So this will be the URL. Just replace the local host with 10022 when I using an Android emulator or with a computer's IP address if you're using a physical device. This is the part two to these files. I'm gonna specify insert data.php.
So this will be the URL we will make the post request to. When I come back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a variable and say await http dot this time around I'm gonna use post and you can see it takes URL the headers as before and then the body. So this body is where we're gonna put the variables we declared in our PHP file so that these variables will be inserted into the variables in the PHP file. For the URL, I'm gonna say UI and code full and then our URL. For the headers, I'm gonna say accept application slash JSON as we did earlier. And then the body, I'm gonna say body. So this body is also a map. I'm gonna put this here and then provide the variables in the PHP file. So the first one is this U name, not the username, but this particular one in the inverted commerce. I'm gonna provide it here. And then what do I want to set it to? It can be whatever, but then we'll replace it with our text editing controller's values. And then the next one will be, and then some get on this data. So what I'm going to do instead of this data is just provide this username here and then a password as well. Okay, so once this is done, I want to keep the response and call it response body, which will be called to json.decode press body. So when I'm done, I want to print this rest body. Okay, so time to test this. I'm gonna copy this and go all the way down to our insert method and put this here. I'm gonna save this as well. And then back in our database, you can see we have these items, hello, hi, what's your name? And then for the body, we have this as well. I'm gonna go ahead and provide some name I'll hit this insert. Now you can see down here, we have inserted data, which means we've successfully been able to insert the data. I'm gonna go back to my database. That's in here, I'm gonna refresh. And you can see we have this new one and pass one. I'm gonna hit this and set the data down and then refresh this. Okay, so you can see we have try again again, hidden feature. Now I'm gonna go ahead and update the data in our database. Okay, so for our update method, I'm gonna be needing connection.php. I'm gonna be needing a query as well. I'm just gonna copy this since it's gonna be something similar and instead change this to delete it. So the raw difference actually lies here. I'm also gonna go ahead and copy these two variables. Okay, so here the raw difference lies here. Other than that, everything remains the same. So here I'm gonna say update. And what do we want to update? We want to update our table. And our table name is, let's chart. We want to set the heading to like we did before, we have to escape these quotations. We want to set the heading to username, the body to pass WD, uh, heading new one. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to update this color row. The back main of that, I'm just gonna copy this since most of the stuff will be the same. I'm gonna change this to update method. And then for the URL, it's gonna be different cause we are interested in a new file. So this time around we'll be interested in update data.php.
what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this and fix it to my update method. Hopefully, we should be able to update this. I'm going to hit update. And you can see deleted. So that was a problem here. I actually echoed deleted, but then this doesn't delete in any way. I update rather. But then this doesn't change the results anyway. We're going to go back to our browser and refresh this. And you can see now we've successfully been able to update this to what was in the text field. So the last but not the least will be this delete button. And to do that, I'm going to come here, add my connection.php file, create a variable for my query, prepare my query for execution, execute my query, and then display this resource once the item has been deleted. So for my query, I'm going to say delete from this chart where id equals 1. So this is the row with ID 1. So hopefully we should be able to delete this hello, how are you? Back in name of that, I'm going to go ahead and copy this again. I'm going to call this delete method. And I wouldn't really be needing this body here. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. So I'm removing it because here yeah, we are not using those variables as we did for here. And we are using them here and here. Also, we are going to be needing this delete data.php instead. So I'm going to provide that for the URL. And then I think we are set to go. So I'm going to copy this. And then hit the delete button. So you can see it deleted this item and let's go back to our database we still have it here hello how are you let's refresh and now you can see our item with id1 is gone okay so this is gonna be it for this tutorial okay so i wanted us to save some time that's why i ended up copying and pasting the process which we're going to repeat over and over again don't worry if you don't get it feel free to check out my previous tutorial on how to connect a Flutter app to a local host or to an online server. And also check the previous tutorial on how to fetch data from the server or from the local host into your Flutter app. So hopefully you understand this. So just a quick note, I've created an API for fun facts and I'll leave a link in the description in case you may need it just to play around in your Flutter app. In the next video, in the next video we're gonna Take a look at how to insert a picture into your database. So that will be it for this tutorial. Feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.